What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about something pretty important that not a lot of folks talk about and that's how to detect your user's current network status if they're connected to the network or they're not as well as the type. So if they're on Wi-Fi or cellular. Uh, I think nowadays a lot of folks just talk about API calls and do this and do that with the internet, but we should never assume that the user has a network connection. Uh, and also if you're targeting your app to be used by users around the world, you should also be very cognizant that not everybody is on LTE or 5G. So um, here we are on the network uh, framework page on the Apple developer docs, and this is what we're going to be using uh, to implement all of this today. So that all said, uh, hit that like button as per usual helps out with every single video on the channel at large. If you're a returning viewer, hit that subscribe button while you're at it. If you've enjoyed the content so far, get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's talk about some networking. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template here and I'm gonna go ahead and call this project Network Monitor. And make sure your language is Swift, your lifecycle UI kit and interface is Storyboard. Go ahead and continue and we'll throw it onto our desktop for the time being. And before we get into some code, let's go ahead and expand our Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And next, let's gonna, let's, we're gonna go to the view controller. Hopefully this font size is nice and large for everybody to see. So cool, network monitoring. So first and foremost, we don't really wanna put our code in a view controller because we want every view controller, an object that needs it around our entire app to be able to access the value. So what instead we're gonna do is create a new file here and it's gonna be a Swift file. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, network monitor. And in here, we're gonna create a class and this class is gonna basically uh, be responsible for checking if the network updated, as well as if there's uh, currently an active internet connection, things like that. So we're gonna create a final class called Network Monitor, and we're gonna use it as a singleton. So we're gonna create a static constant on here called shared, and that's gonna have a network monitor and essentially, we are you going to use this uh, class to wrap calls into the network framework, which is a framework provided by Apple. And as the name implies, it has a bunch of networking information in it. So what else do we need on here? So we're going to want uh, a couple properties and functions. The first thing we're going to want is the queue on which we're going to continuously check the uh, internet connection every time it changes. And this is going to be a dispatch queue dot global, which is the background queue. You can think of it as the background thread if you're not familiar with queues and threading. The next thing we're gonna want is a actual instance of a monitor. And this is a network path monitor. Next, we're gonna want a public way to check uh, if the device is connected or not. So we're going to create a is connected bool that's public. Now we don't want the public scope to be able to update this. So we're going to say it's public for anybody to read, but only this class can update its value by saying the setter is private. Next, we want to create a private initializer. And in here, we're going to go ahead and assign our monitor to NW path monitor, just like that. And we can actually get rid of this self. The reason this is private is so uh, this now actually requires every single uh, consumer of this class to use the shared instance. And let's see, it's complaining here because we didn't give this a default value to start off with. We're gonna start it off uh, as false and this error should go away. There it goes. Cool. 
So let's see, what functions do we need? We're gonna want a public function called start uh, monitoring. And as the name implies, this is gonna start the listening process uh, onto network change events. Then there's gonna be stop monitoring. So let's do, uh, let's do stop monitoring first since it's simpler. We can just say monitor, cancel. And in the start monitoring case, we're gonna say monitor uh, update, path update handler is going to be a path in. And we're basically gonna say if path.status is uh, satisfied, we're connected. So what we can actually, instead of uh, assigning it directly is we can say uh, self dot is connected equals if path is satisfied. Now this causes a retain cycle. So we're gonna put weak self here and update this to be self optional. And essentially every time the internet connection changes, this handler gets called because our path uh, monitor basically changed and it's gonna assign this or update this based on uh, whether or not you know the internet is connected or not. So the next thing you might be wondering is uh, how do you get the current type of connection? So let's go ahead and create a, another function and we can go ahead and say private func uh, get connection type and in here we can say monitor and I believe off of here there is, let's see, there is a start function. Ah, that's actually one thing we totally forgot to do. In the initializer, what we want to do is we do want to say monitor. I guess not in the initializer. I guess we can say in the start function, we can say monitor. And we want to say monitor. Let's see, where's my typo? It looks like it's complaining. Let's get rid of this for a quick second. We're going to say monitor dot start and we're going to pass in the queue and this queue is the global queue that we provided right up here and uh, let's go ahead and see what else we can do so how do we get this uh, connection type uh, i believe the path has a ha, here it is so the path has a function on it called uh, use this interface type and there's multiple interface types you can look at in here. So there's Wi-Fi, wired ethernet, and cellular, which are the usual common culprits right there. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna create an enum on here. So we're gonna say uh, connection type. There's gonna be three cases, Wi-Fi, cellular, and ethernet. So this would be like a wired connection. And we're gonna create a public property on here. Once again, it's gonna be private set. And it's going to be a connection type. We're gonna say connection type. And it's gonna be a connection type optional. And the reason it's optional is from the get go, there is no connection type. So we don't wanna default it to any of these um, because we don't know if the user is even connected. So here what we can say is uh, self dot connection type equals something. So how do we actually figure out what it equals? So what I'm gonna say is this function is gonna actually assign it, get connection type. So we're gonna pass in the path, which is going to be a uh, NW path. So here, let's go ahead and say self get connection type and path, pass in that path. Let me get rid of my antivirus pop-up. And down in this function, now we can say is, uh, if path uses Wi-Fi, then the current, let's see, if path uses Wi-Fi, we want to assign, let's see how this is complaining first and foremost. Let's say command B to just run and make sure, rather build and make sure everything is compiling. Sometimes Xcode loves to give errors for no reason. Uh, we're gonna say current, what did I call it up here? Current connection type, connection type, okay. We're gonna say connection type equals Wi-Fi. And let me just go ahead and copy and paste this with an else, just like that, and just like that. And here we're going to say if it is cellular, 
we can say cellular. And in this case, if it's uh, wired ethernet, we can say ethernet. And then finally, if none of these uh, match, we can just nil out the connection type. Uh, or we could, in, in another way we could approach this is we could have a case in here and say unknown. Um, and actually what we could do is we can default this instead of it being optional, which becomes a little hairy in some use cases because you have to un unwrap it. You can say this is unknown. So that's essentially how you set up an object that listens to internet changes. Now, where would you go ahead and call this start function? So what I would recommend is head on over to your app delegate file and find the function right here. Uh, application did finish launching with options. And I would simply say uh, network monitor shared and you wanna start monitoring. So as soon as your app launches, uh, you can start monitoring. Uh, the different network states. So if we go to our view controller, we can say if network monitor shared is connected, let's go ahead and print out your on Wi-Fi. And the other thing we can do is uh, in an else block, we can say print you're not on Wi-Fi, or you're not connected rather, is probably more appropriate because you could be on cellular. So what we can go ahead and do is, let's go ahead and pick a simulator from our list here. Let's go with the 11. And let's, uh, let's see if this prints out what we expect it to print out. So let our simulator boot up there. It's taking its good old, nice little time there. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, and let me move this up for the time being. So what's interesting is you could also have a, a way to notify each view controller when it changes. So let's see, we've got our app there and we see printed down here, you're connected. So what I'm gonna actually do is let's go ahead and stop the simulator and let me disconnect from Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn Wi-Fi off and we're gonna hit the run button one more time. And there's our simulator and we can see you're connected. You're connected, connected. That doesn't sound right. I think I have a typo in my view controller. Head back there. Uh, you're not connected is what I meant. Let's try that one more time. And there you have it, you're not connected. And the last thing actually I'll show is the way this connection handler works. So every time that we call, rather change the network connection state, we come into this uh, closure. So I'm simply going to print out uh, the value of uh, is connected. And because it's optional, it's gonna complain that we can't print it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, a default value of NA. And now when we go ahead and run it, whoops, let me fix that quote. Uh, we're gonna see by default, we should be connected because I uh, paused the video and actually connected there. So you see here, uh, you are connected and the value is true. And hopefully my recording doesn't cut out on me since it is internet reliance. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect from the network again, just like that. And you'll see we now get false here. And let me connect again really fast, otherwise my recording is gonna stop. Uh, and there you have it as, uh, it should be true that time. That was kind of strange, um, but it should be, Let's, let's see, let's run this again. And you see it's, uh, it's true now. So uh, I'm not sure why I printed false that second time. I would have to debug it a little bit, but this is basically the premise of uh, how you can go ahead and check the state. So uh, I have my hunch as to why it is, uh, why it is false is just in case the path is uh, currently not available and you're establishing a new connection, it might return false. So that's actually a good little edge case that y'all just saw right there. So uh, maybe a better approach is check if it's not unsatisfied. That way, if it's in the process of connecting slash it is satisfied, you're gonna get uh, either true or false more correctly. So uh, I'm not gonna edit that part out of the video. I think it's important to see these edge cases, uh, so on and so forth. So. 
that's all I've got for you guys today. Fairly straightforward video, pretty common use case. I don't think many people talk about little things like handling internet connection, but obviously it's pretty important to every app. Don't just assume everyone has the world's greatest internet connection, especially if you want people around the world to use your app. Um, so yeah, that said, if you haven't hit that like button, make sure to do so. Helps out quite a bit with all the videos and channel at large. Leave any comments down below, if any questions, uh, feedback, concerns, video suggestions. Uh, if you just want to say hi, I love hearing from every single one of you. Uh, I still can't believe we're past 10K on this channel. And I think, honestly, we're going to grow pretty quickly and go way further. So hit subscribe while you're at it if you want to come along on that journey. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.